Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, your friend Pat, and I'm so excited to see you here for this very exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Part of the reason I'm particularly excited about this one is because we're going to address one of the most commonly received questions today, which is how do we actually measure time complexity or the efficiency of a candidate solution? So if we look at this one, for example, this task was taken from the interview practice section, and you'll notice that it specifically gives us a directive regarding the time complexity that we want to aim for in this task. The thing is, we wouldn't necessarily want to have to go through every submission that we get and manually check to see if it actually has that time complexity. Leaving a node at the top like that might not be enough. So as it turns out, we actually are implicitly measuring for this uh, in all of our tasks. And the way we do it is basically through a time limitation. So if we take a look at this one, notice it says execution time limit four seconds. That's for JavaScript. It would change depending on the language that we select. I think Swift has a lot more, something like 16 seconds. Uh, so it, it adapts to the language speed. Now, in this case, since we have four seconds, we can structure our tests in such a way that they wouldn't pass if the solution was less efficient. So in this case, we're really aiming for a big O of N solution. We're looking for something that would compute in linear time. Uh, so something like this, which is quadratic, really shouldn't be accepted here, right? It's not efficient enough. So in this case, basically the idea is we just have a test, namely test number 10, as you can see here, that caused our algorithm to exceed the time limit. So if we take a look at test number 10, it's a, it's a fairly large number. I mean, it may have just been worn down by some of the ones before it because that four seconds is for all of the tests and not just like per individual one. So we need to make it through all of them in order to have an efficient enough solution here. Uh, the way we would actually solve this problem in terms of uh, providing greater efficiency here would be to memoize or use dynamic programming. So in that case, now that we're looking at a big O of N solution, it should execute just fine. So notice in this case, we didn't actually have to make any notes at the top about the specific requirements in this case. I mean, we could have, uh, but it's implicit. So basically the candidate will figure out very quickly if their solution is not efficient enough and it simply won't be accepted by the system. Now, I know there are some uh, other cases where maybe competitors have like, um, a complexity calculator, something that would actually go through at the end and say, hey, your solution was like big O of n squared, or maybe it was big O of n log n or something like that. Uh, so sometimes I'm asked if, if this is something we support, if we have some sort of technology like that. And basically the idea is that that type of technology, eh, I mean, there, there are reasons why it's technically not really possible to have an automated complexity calculator, things like the halting problem and also the, the type of uh, server load it would, would require to handle something like that on every solution. I, I mean, we'd definitely rather put that efficiency into making a, a fast, easy to use product for, for our users. Uh, but the other thing is, I mean, it, we just don't really tend to get the most accurate kind of results from those kinds of things. The, uh, the estimations for our complexity can be inaccurate or misleading. And the last thing we wanna do is to mislead our dear users. So basically the idea is we handle all of this implicitly. We make it so that um, when we're looking at the solution, basically we just have to uh, make sure that our solution is good enough to pass the tests. Uh, we don't specifically need to know strictly like what the efficiency was, what the time complexity was. It just has to be enough to pass the test. So basically, if you're planning on creating a test, uh, the idea would be to put in, or sorry, if you're planning on creating a task, the idea would be to put in tests that will have the algorithm exceeding the time limit for a suboptimal type of solution. So basically, the answer to the question is that we implicitly measure for time complexity requirements by using the tests and the time limitation in order to time out any test that's not efficient enough. 
Let me know if you have any questions on that. And uh, if not, I guess we'll see you next week for another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. See you later.